Alex, the root. Hello and welcome to my virtual quiz night. I hope you're all safe and I hope you're all well. We are streaming live on many platforms tonight. We are on YouTube, so a big hello to all of you lot on there. We're also on Facebook Live, so a big hello to all of you there as well. And we are also streaming on Zoom with a fair few people on there. Although they can't hear me because they've not turned on my mic and I'm still waiting for mum to turn on my mic on Zoom. Hopefully should have heard that one by now so uh, she needs to figure out what to do. Is it turned on? No, she still hasn't turned it on. Okay, so I'm going to carry on regardless. Oh, she's done it. I need you to mute, unmute your one mum. So, tonight's quiz is going to consist of eight rounds. Uh, there's going to be a mixture of general knowledge, picture rounds, and a few specialty rounds. And I'll explain them as we go along. We'll do four rounds to begin with. We'll have a break, and then we'll do the last four rounds. Remember, it is just for fun, so please no cheating. No using Alexa. No using Google. It was all just for fun. So we're going to start off with the first round. So all you need is a pen and paper. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the questions. And then we'll just have a quick flick through afterwards just to give you some time. And then we'll answer it yourself. So you need to answer it yourself. We'll mark it. You just let us know how much you get. And then we'll move on to the next round. So remember, it is all just for fun. So we're going to begin with your first round. It's a general knowledge round. It's just a set of 10 questions. Your first question is, so all you need to do is write down the answer. Your first question of tonight's quiz is, what type of fish is Nemo in the 2003 film Finding Nemo? What type of fish is Nemo in the 2003 film Finding Nemo? Your second question, does the term starboard refer to the left-hand side or the right-hand side of a ship? So does the term starboard refer to the left-hand side or the right-hand side of a ship?
Your third question. In geometry, what name is given to the longest side of a right-angled triangle? So your third question is, what name is given to the longest side of a right-angled triangle? I'm hoping everyone can hear me all right. I know that they may not be able to hear me on Zoom, but I'm hoping if you can hear me on Facebook and on YouTube, you can just let me know. Moving on to the fourth question. The university boat race, referred to as the boat race since 2018, finishes just before which bridge? So the university boat race, referred to as the boat race since 2018, finishes just before which bridge? Question number five. Known mainly for its custard and rice pudding, which food brand which food brand has been advertised with the slogan Devon knows how they make it so creamy? So known mainly for its custard and rice pudding, which food brand has been advertised with the slogan Devon knows how they make it so creamy? Moving on to question number six. A portrait of which famous woman in history featured on the reverse side of Bank of England £10 notes issued between 1975 and 1994? So a portrait of which famous woman in history featured on the reverse side of Bank of England £10 notes issued between 1975 and 1994? Question number seven. In Hinduism, Ganesha is a god who is depicted as having the head of what type of animal? So in Hinduism, Ganesha is a god who is depicted as having a head of what type of animal? Your next question, question number 8 of 10. Who won the 2019 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award? So who won the 2019 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award? And question nine, in poker, what name is given to a hand that contains five cards that are of sequential rank, but aren't all of the same suit? So in poker, what name is given to a hand that contains five cards that are of sequential rank, 
but aren't all of the same suit. And question 10 of this round, your last question. Which confectionery company created the Kit Kat? Which confectionery company created the Kit Kat? Don't go and grab a Kit Kat and have a look, because that's cheating too. So which confectionery company created the Kit Kat? I'll give you a little time for this question, then we'll just flick through the, the rest of the questions. Just in a comment here, where's the Kardashian questions? They didn't make it into this quiz. Unfortunately about that. Okay, so we'll just quickly flick through the questions again, just in case you missed any. So question one was, what type of fish is Nemo in the 2003 film Finding Nemo? Question two was, does the term starboard refer to the left-hand side or the right-hand side of a ship? Question three was, in geometry, what name is given to the longest side of a right-angle triangle? Question four, the university boat race finishes just before which bridge? Question five, Known mainly for its customised pudding, which food brand has been advertised with the slogan Devon knows how they make it so creamy? Question 6. A portrait of which famous woman in history featured on the reverse side of Bank of England £10 notes issued between 1975 and 1994? Question 7. In Hinduism, Ganesha is a god who is depicted as having the head of what type of animal? Question 8 was, who won the 2019 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award? Question 9 was, in poker, what name is given to a hand that contains five cards that are of sequential rank, but aren't all of the same suit? And the last question was, which confectionery company created the Kit Kat? Just in Sarah's foot. I'm on a diet. There's no Kit Kats here. <laughs> just give you a little more time just to finish off your answers. Before we go through the, the answers to, uh, to these questions, we'll mark them straight after the round. And then you can let me know how much you got on that round and what your total score is. So this round is out of 10. I'll just give you one more minute, just in case you've, you've missed any. And I hope you've all got a drink at hand as well. I can't see anyone with a drink in, in the, the Zoom chat. Oh, I see one drink. Oh, I see two dr three drinks. Oh, it looks like everyone has. I see them. I see them. Okay, so we'll go through the answers to that round. So your first question was, what type of fish is Nemo in the 2003 film Finding Nemo? The answer was a clownfish. So Nemo was a clownfish. Second question, starboard, does it refer to the left-hand side or right-hand side? It is the right-hand side. Port is the term used for the left-hand side. Question three, in geometry, what was the name given to the longest side of a right angle triangle? It's the hypotenuse. It's the hypotenuse. Question four, the university boat race finishes just before which bridge? It is the Chiswick Bridge. University finishes just before the Chiswick Bridge. Question five, the food brand advertised with the slogan, Devon knows how they make it so creamy, is Ambrosia. 
Nice, I see Trudy's got a big G&T with a sparkler and umbrella. Very nice. Trudy. Yeah, Trudy. Question six. The famous woman in history featured on the reverse side of the Bank of England £10 note between 75 and 94. It was Florence Nightingale. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> you do know they can hear you. Oh, sorry. What did you put? Edith Cavell. Edith Cavell, he put. Them, the answer is Florence Nightingale. Question seven was, Ganesha is the god who is depicted as having the head of what type of animal? It is an elephant. Question eight was, who won the 2019 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award? It was Ben Stokes. I've just had a comment on here. Andy, stop swearing. <laughs> Trudy again. <laughs> Question nine. In poker, the name given to a hand that contains five cards that are of sequential rank but aren't all of the same suit. It is a straight. And your last question, the confectionery company that created the Kit Kat, it was Round Trees. Round Trees created the Kit Kat. So it is out of 10. So your current score will be out of 10. What, what scores did you get? Let me know what you've got out of 10 so far. Oh, on Zoom, they're saying they got 7. Someone's got 7 out of 10. Two, is that two and four out of ten? Ten out of ten. Well done, Ken. Well done. Yeah, that's Ken and Carol at the bottom. We're getting sevens, five, fives on the Facebook stream. A two. <laughs> Seven, Big Phil. Well done, Phil. No, they just said classic Ken. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second round of the night. There is five possible answers here. But well done, Tracy. Tracy got six. This is a logo round. So you're going to see a set of five logos. Oh, some we're still getting scores through on the Facebook, uh, on YouTube even. Four, eight, seven, six and a seven. Some put five out of ten with thick. <laughs> okay, so the second round. <laughs> the second round is a logo round. So you're going to see five logos. So all you need to do is name the logo. So here is your first logo. You just need to tell me what that logo is of. And you're looking in the box there, and then they will appear in the box above me. Whilst the next one is there. Oh, there's a delay on there. Your second logo. I just seen someone say, we're late, we forgot, and we're in the hot tub. That's not on, Laura. That's not on. So there is your, your second logo there. Oh, that one is. Your third logo, there is your third logo. We'll move on to the fourth logo. And we'll move on to the final logo, the fifth and final logo. Mm 
<laughs> I don't know whether you picked that up what Andy said. So there are your five logos for this round. I'll give you a little bit more time just to figure out what they may or may not be. Okay, so we'll move on to the answers. So this round is obviously out of five. So your first logo was that. Correct answer is, it's Candy Crush or Candy Crush Saga. You can have either or. So the first logo was Candy Crush Saga. Your second logo was this swan looking logo. The answer is Swarovski. I'm too poor to have Swarovski, aren't we? That's why Andy didn't know what it was. <laughs> so your second logo is Swarovski. Your next logo is Paramount. So the third logo is Paramount. Your fourth logo is McCain, as in the potatoes. Potatoes! And your final logo, the chicken, it is Nando's. So that round was out of five. How did you do in that? And let me know your total score as well. So your total will be out of 15. That round was out of five. We've got threes, we've got four. I'm guessing, Linda, that's out of 7 out of 15, not 7 out of 5. <laughs> you guys got 5 out of 5. That's good, that's good. I see 3s, 5s. Well done, well done. Oh, Zil Kim, Zil, she didn't know any of them. I'm surprised, I'm surprised. Well done, Tracy, 5 out of 5. Ursula got zero. <laughs> well done, Paul. Well done, Donna. Well done. Oh, Dina. Is it two in total or two overall? Well, out of that round. Well done, well done. Okay, so we're going to move on to our third round. It is a connections round. So... You're going to get four questions, and then the answers to them four questions will connect in some way, and that is your fifth question. So you'll have four questions, and then your fifth question will be, what is the connection between the previous answers? So your first question in the connections round is, In snooker, what name is commonly used to refer to a shot where a player strikes the target ball towards a cushion at a precise angle, so that it rebounds into the opposite pocket. So in snooker, what name is commonly used to refer to a shot where a player strikes the target ball towards a cushion at the precise angle so that it rebounds into the opposite pocket? So you're looking for the name of the commonly used term of the shot. Your second question, what word completes the titles of both the last James Bond film to star Roger Moore and the last James Bond film to star Timothy Dalton? So what word completes the titles of both the last James Bond film to star Roger Moore and the last James Bond film to star Timothy Dalton? 
So remember, this is a connections round. So the answers to these questions will all have some sort of connection. Question three, which animal is also the name of the second largest city in the state of New York? Which animal is also the name of the second largest city in the state of New York? Your fourth question, without cheating, so don't look down if you're at a PC. <laughs> what symbol can you type by holding shift and pressing the number four on a standard UK keyboard? So what number can you type by holding shift and pressing the number four on a standard UK keyboard? And then question five is, what is the connection between all or part of the previous four answers? So what is the connection between all or part of the previous four answers? So all of the questions had some sort of connection. What was it? I'll flick through the questions just one more time quickly for you if you missed any. So the first one of the connections round was, in snooker, what name is commonly used to refer to a shot where a player strikes the target ball towards a cushion at a precise angle so that it rebounds into the opposite pocket? So that was your first question. Your second was, what word completes the titles of both the last James Bond film to star Roger Moore and the last James Bond film to star Timothy Dalton? Your third question was, which animal is also the name of the second largest city in the state of New York? So which animal was also the name of the second largest city in New York? Your fourth question was, what symbol can you type by holding shift and pressing the number four on a standard UK keyboard? And the fifth question was, what is the connection between all or part of your previous four answers? Give you a little more time just to figure it out if you haven't already got it. How's everyone doing? How are you doing, Andy? Badly. He's doing badly. How have you done in that round? I don't know. You think you've got the connection? No, I don't think I've got anything right on that. Okay, so we'll go to the answers for the connections round. So, your first question was, in snooker, what's the name commonly used to refer to a shot where a player strikes the target ball towards a cushion at a precise angle, so that it rebounds into the opposite pocket? is called a double, a double. Question two, what word completes the titles of both the last James Bond film to star Roger Moore and the last James Bond film to star Timothy Dalton? It's the word kill. It was a view to a kill and license to kill.
Question three was, what animal is the second largest city in the state of New York? It is Buffalo. And your fourth question was, what symbol can you type by holding shift and pressing number four on a standard UK keyboard? It was the dollar sign. So the connection between all or part of the previous four answers, you have got, so you've got double, you've got kill, you've got buffalo, and you've got dollar. Connection is bill, as in double bill, kill bill, buffalo bill, and dollar bill. So that was your connection to that round. So that was out of five points. What did you get out of five? You got two, there's two there. Two. One, two. What did you get, Andy? Zero. Oh. You said it was really easy. It's fairly easy. What have we got? We've got a five. Did Dad get five? Got three, two, four coming through. Well done, well done. Coming through on YouTube now, two, two. Oh, we've got an old oh, poor Andy. Who's got that? Sarah. Rude. <laughs> There's nothing poor about me, sweetheart. We've got more twos, twos on Facebook. Okay, so. We're going into our fourth round. This is the last round before we have a break. This round is What's Their Name Round? And I've been a bit lenient on you this time. <laughs> Just in a one, you cruel bastard. <laughs> oh, with, with, with Dad, you've been accused of cheating on YouTube. I don't know who it is, but someone's accused Dad of cheating. It wouldn't surprise me. Okay, so this round is a what's their name round. So it's a set of five celebrity names and you need to pick the option of what their real life name is. Okay, I've given you A, B or C just to make it slightly easier for you. So question one, what is Calvin Harris's real name? Calvin Harris's real name. Is that Adam Wiles? So A is Adam Wiles. Is it B, Adam Lambert? Or is it C, Adam Levine? So what is Calvin Harris's real name? Is it A, Adam Wilds, B, Adam Lambert? Or C, Adam Levine? I just had a message from Tracy Bullard saying, we love Shane's dad. I don't know why. So the next question, what's their name? So what's the real name of Lady Gaga? Is it A, Alicia Moore? Is it B, Stephanie Germanotta? Or is it C, Destiny Hope? So what is the real name of Lady Gaga? Is it A, Alicia Moore? B, Stephanie Germanotta? Or is it C, Destiny Hope? Your third question, so what is the name of Marilyn Monroe? What was Marilyn Monroe's real name? Is it A, Francis Gum? Is it B, Norma Mortensen? Or is it C, Karen Johnson? So what is the real name of Marilyn Monroe? Is it A, Francis Gum? Is it B, Norma Mortensen? Or is it C, Karen Johnson?
Number four, what is the real name of Hulk Hogan? So what is the real name of Hulk Hogan? Is it A, Paul Levesque? Is it B, Dwayne Johnson? Or is it C, Terry Bollea? So what is the real name of Hulk Hogan? Is it A, Paul Levesque? B, Dwayne Johnson? Or C, Terry Bollea? I can see your hand there. It wasn't for you, it was the personal thing. And your final, what's their name? It's the classic one that's always appeared in our quiz. What is the real name of Jesse J? <laughs> is it A, Tracy Bullard? Is it B, Danielle Hammond? Or is it C, Jessica Cornish? All three of which are watching tonight. So one of you has the real name of Jesse J. So is it A, Tracy Bullard? B, Danielle Hammond? Or is it C, Jessica Cornish? What is Jesse J's real name? Okay, we'll just quickly flick through them again if you needed it. So the real name of Calvin Harris was Adam Wilde, Adam Lambert, or Adam Levine. Real name of Lady Gaga is it Alicia Moore, Stephanie Germanotta, or Destiny Hope. Real name of Marilyn Monroe is it Francis Gum, Norma Mortensen, or Karen Johnson. Real name of Hulk Hogan is it Paul Levesque, Dwayne Johnson, or Terry Bollea. And the real name of Jesse J, is it Tracy Bullard, Danielle Hammond, or Jessica Cornish? I'll give you a little more time. Just had a few of the people from this question message me. <laughs> okay, so we'll go through the answers to this round. So the first one, the real name of Calvin Harris it is A, Adam Wiles. So Calvin Harris's real name is Adam Wiles. Lady Gaga's real name is B, Stephanie Germanotta. Marilyn Monroe's real name is B, Norma Mortensen. Francis Gum is Judy Garland. And Karen Johnson is Whoopi Goldberg. Really? Yes. Oh. Hulk Hogan's real name is Terry Bollea. And Jesse J's real name is Jessica Cornish. Shout out to you, Jesse. <clears throat> so that round was out of five points. So, so far you can score a maximum out of 25. So what did you get out of five? And what have you got out of 25? Messages through regarding that one. Tracy has had a lot of messages saying that she was in the quiz. Trudy got five. Uh, there's a few people got four. We've got fours. We've got three from Ken. So total scores. We've got 20 out of 25 from Big Phil. What's your total scores out of 25? 20 for Ken. We're getting 16, 17, 16. Six total. <laughs> 16 out of 25. Dean and Jeff got five out of five in that round. That's good. Jane, you got four. Four out of five. Fifteen out of twenty-five. People getting full houses. Rudy's got fifteen out of twenty-five. Mark Ambrose got eighteen. 
Melanie's got five out of five in that round and 12 in total. Tracy, you got three out of five in that round. You bet we've got the classic Jesse J one, right? That's appeared every year. Uh, 14, 20, Jules, 12, Ruth. What are you on, Andy? Um, I, I, out of 25. Yeah. Andy's on 10 out of 25. <laughs> 21 out of 25 for Jade. Ursula, you got 7 out of 25. Well done, Tony, for getting them all right in that round. Okay, so we're going to have a quick break, but just before we do, I've been asked to wish someone a happy birthday for tomorrow. And so this is a big happy birthday from your entire family. And your lovely mother has submitted this wonderful photo of you to show to the world. So happy birthday, Emily. Hope you have a fantastic 27th birthday tomorrow. Wishing you all the very best wishes from me and Andy as well. What a lovely, lovely photo. <laughs> Who's that? That's Emily. The first one weren't suitable for, for viewing, so we had to swap it out. Looks like it was taken yesterday. <laughs> it was. She hasn't aged a day. Okay, so we're going to have a quick five, ten minute break. And then we'll be back here for the final four rounds. So I shall see you shortly. In about five, ten minutes. About quarter past eight, twenty past eight.
Okay, so I hope you've uh, refilled your drinks and uh, prepared yourself for the, the second half of the quiz. Before we start, we've just been asked to say a few more shout outs. There's a happy birthday to there's Lauren Moore from Alfie Bailey. Happy 50th birthday to Tony Breakspear. Sorry we couldn't go out for your drinks as planned last weekend. Hopefully after all this is done, we can go out. Happy birthday to Michael Footer for tomorrow. And a big shout out to Flipboy from the Waveney Gym. Okay, so you had a brief, brief image of Andy then. Eating. Okay, so we're going to move on to our fifth round now. And it is called Hugo's Film Round. So as you all know, Hugo is an amazing film star. He was actually in the opening of uh, the MGM titles. You know, The Lion? It's actually A-M-H-M. -M. Take a look. And Hugo's actually appeared in a few more films. You may have not noticed him the very first time you watched the film, but I've took some stills from that film. So all you need to do is tell me the name of the film that he is in and the year the film was originally released. So you, it's the film that you see, name the film and the year it was originally released, okay? So your first one is this lovely image. Hugo was actually in this film. Can you believe it? So you're looking for the name of the film and the year the film was originally released. So the name of the film and the year the film was originally released. So your next film is this one. So name the film and the year it was originally released. <laughs> so you're looking for the name of the film and the year the film was originally released. Open those two streams are still working. Is the Facebook one still working? So you're looking for the name of the film Hugo was in and the year it was released. So that's your second film. Your third film is this one. So you're looking for the name of the film and the year this film was originally released. <laughs> So you're looking for the film, the name of the film, and the year the film was originally released. That film. Not any previous versions of it, that one. Your fourth film is... <laughs> so you're looking for the name of the film, and the year the film was originally released. <laughs> and your final fifth film <laughs> so you're looking for the name of the film and the year the film was originally released so you, for this one, you will need the subtitle of the film as well to get the point. 
So you're looking for the name of the film and the year the film was originally released. Okay, so I'll just quickly flick through them again. So this was your first film. So you're looking for the name of the film and the year the film was originally released. Here is your second film. Your third film. Your fourth film. And your fifth and final film. Give you a little more time. I can see Dad is bragging on YouTube saying this is too easy. How does everyone else feel about that comment? Okay, so we shall move on to the answers for this round. So you look for the name of the film and the year it was released. The film was The Wizard of Oz for one point. And for another point, 1939. So the film was, so there's two points per question. So one point for The Wizard of Oz. And one more point for 1939 was the year it was originally released. Your second film was E.T., The Extraterrestrial. And the year was 1982. So point for E.T., and a point for 1982. Your third film. This was The Lady and the Tramp. And it was released in 2019. It was only last year this film was released. So the answer was Lady and the Tramp and 2019. Hugo eating his balls. Meatballs. Fourth film. The film was Psycho, it's the famous shower scene from Psycho, and the year it was released was 1960. I got the year right, but not the... <laughs> if you heard that, Andy got the year right, but not the film. What did you put for the film? The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Now, the correct answer was Psycho and 1960. And your final one, the film was Star Wars, Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. You need The Empire Strikes Back bit for the point. If you just got Star Wars, you can have half a point. And the year was 1980. So the film was Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and the year was 1980. So, it is out of 10 for that round. So it is out of 10. So what have you guys scored out of 10? Was that six? Six for Ken, four and a half for Karen, five and a half for Nikki, seven and a half for my dad, six for Rosie. I thought you said it was easy, Dad. Got six of Phil. You got ten. Well done, Phil. Eight for Liz, my co-star Liz. Leslie got five and a half. Surely you didn't get zero, Kim. Donna's got four. Well done, Tracy. They got eight. Matt's got five and a half. Well done, Jill. Seven and a half. Six for Lorraine. Seven for Christina. Five for Jade. Yeah, it's tough on the years. Four for Davinda. Three for Sarah, got four and a half for Jane, six and a half for David, seven out of ten for Mark. Overall scores, Dina's got 16 out of 35. Five and a half, got four and a halfs coming through, three and a halfs. 
I've just been informed also that on the 27th, it's the answer to the previous round, Jessica Cornish's birthday as well. So a happy birthday to you too. Okay, we're going to move on to the next round. It's the initial letter link round. So this round is... Let me get the, the exclamation to this one. So, there's going to be nine questions on general knowledge, plus a final tenth question with an answer that can be spelt out by rearranging the first letters of the first words in the first nine answers that you get. So, question one to nine, whatever those answers are, whatever that first letter of that answer is, for the whole nine, you can scramble up and it will spell out another word, which hopefully will make a bit more sense when we're... Uh, towards the end of that that round okay so it's 10 questions your first one is question one which country both hosted and won the first ever eurovision song contest in 1956 so which country both hosted and won the first ever eurovision song contest in 1956 so with the rules of this round whatever the answer whatever country that is and whatever that letter, whatever country, whatever letter that country begins with will make up the answer to your 10th question. It will make sense when we get to question 10. I promise. Question two, Kirschwasser or Kirsch is a type of brandy made from what type of fruit? Kirschwasser or Kirsch is a type of brandy made from what type of fruit? Question number three. In the comic strips and animated TV series, what colour is Papa Smurf's hat? So in the comic strips and animated TV series, what colour is Papa Smurf's hat? Question number four, so this is an anagram question. Indulge Ill Ego is an anagram of which famous singer? Indulge Ill Ego is an anagram of which famous singer? So rearrange the letters to spell out the name of a famous singer. Have you got it? Give you a little more time to figure that one out. Okay, question five. What flower was also the first name of Billy Piper's character in Doctor Who? So what flower was also the first name of Billy Piper's character in Doctor Who?
Question number six. By what name is St. Stephen's Day more commonly known in the UK? So, by what name is St. Stephen's Day more commonly known in the UK? Question number seven out of ten. In the animated TV show, what is the name of SpongeBob SquarePants's pet sea snail? In the animated TV show, what is the name of SpongeBob SquarePants's pet sea snail? Question number eight. In 1998, who had their third UK number one hit single with Turn Back Time? So in 1998, who had their third UK number one hit single with Turn Back Time? And question nine, what alternative name for nitrous oxide comes from the euphoric effects it can have on someone who inhales it? So what alternative name for nitrous oxide comes from the euphoric effects it can have on someone who inhales it? That is question number nine. And if anyone can hear that snorting, it's the dog. <laughs> Don't speak to me like that, <laughs> And so, your final question is, so, the first letters of the first words in the previous nine answers, so you should have nine answers, so the first letters of the first words only in the previous nine answers can be rearranged to spell the name of which Danish brand, which in 2019 said that a famous long-running long slogan associated with it might not be true. So the first letters of the first words in the previous nine answers can be rearranged to spell the name of which Danish brand, which in 2019 said that a famous long-running slogan associated with it might not be true. So you take the first letters of the first words in your previous nine answers, mix them up, and it's like an anagram, and it should spell out the answer to this question. So I'll quickly flip through the questions again just in case you missed any. So question one was, which country both hosted and won the first ever Eurovision Song Contest in 1956? Question two was, Kirschwasser or Kirsch is a type of brandy made from what type of fruit? Question three, in the comic strips and animated TV series, what colour is Papa Smurf's hat? Question four, 
Indulge Ill Ego is an anagram of which famous singer? Question five. What flower was also the first name of Billy Piper's character in Doctor Who? Question six. By what name is St. Stephen's Day more commonly known in the UK? Question seven. In the animated TV show, what's the name of SpongeBob SquarePants' pet seal snail? Pet sea snail. <laughs> Question eight. In 1998, who had their third UK number one hit single with Turn Back Time? Question nine. What alternative name for nitrous oxide comes from the euphoric effect it has when euphoric effects it have on someone when they inhale it? So then if you take the first letters of the first words in the previous answers, it can be rearranged to spell the name of which Danish brand, which in 2019 said that a famous long-running slogan associated with it might not be true. <laughs> That's Jane's per. I've not got any vowels. So you rearrange the letters. It won't spell out one from one to nine. You need to move the letters around. It's like an anagram. Give you a little bit more time on that one to figure that one out. How are you doing, Andy? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't got the answer. Have you not got the brand? Okay, so we'll go through the answers to that round. So your first question was, which country both hosted and won the first ever Eurovision Song Contest in 1956? The answer was Switzerland. So we've got an S to use. Kirschwasser or Kirsch is a type of brandy made from what type of fruit? It is cherries. So now we've got a C to use. In the comic strip, some animated TV series, what colour is Papa Smurf's hat? It is red, so now we've got an R to use. Indulge Ill Ego is an anagram of which famous singer? It's Ellie Golding, so we've got an E to use. What flower was also the first name of Billy Piper's character in Doctor Who? is Rose, so we've got an R to use. By what name is St. Stephen's Day more commonly known in the UK? It's Boxing Day, so we've got a B to use. Question seven, SpongeBob SquarePants pet sea snail was called Gary. Now we've got a G. Question eight, who had their third UK number one hit single with Turn Back Time in 1998? It was Aqua. Their first was Barbie Girl. Their second was Dr. Jones. So we've now got an A to use. And the alternate name for nitrous oxide is Laughing Gas. So we've now got an L. So then if you use those first letters of the first words... Rearrange them to spell the name which Danish brand? It is Carlsberg, referring to the slogan, probably the best lager in the world. I can see Karen and her team cheering. I'm guessing they got Carlsberg. No, that's the, that's the thing I thought of, but I didn't know. No. Because I didn't get all the other things. So that round was out of 10. So how well did you do in that round? We've got seven, we've got uh, eight there from Ken.
Andy got was it four? four? Four from Andy. Six from Annie Linda. What? Six there. We've got six coming through. Dad got six. Nikki got eight. Getting fours, fives. Boom, eight. Well done, Matt. Seven, apparently an 8,000. Well done, Liz. <laughs> Got six, six. Nine, couldn't figure out. Indulge ill ego. Five out of ten, maybe I need to drink up. Maybe you do. Sixes, we've got another five. Eight, well done, Jules. Eight, Tracy, well done, Mark. Seven, Gemma got two. Jade got six, changed cherries as went for share for Carlsberg. Ah, oh. okay, yep. Name of the game of that round. Tracy Billard got three. Full house for Elisa Humbles and Henry and her team. Well done. So running total. So it should be out of 45 so far. Big Phil, you've got 44 out of 45. Bloody hell. Jane got six. I got the anagram despite not having any vowels. <laughs> well done. Scores from Martha Mar as follows. Nil point. Mrs. Carey, six point me from David Carey. So we've got 34 out of 45. 22 out of 45 is coming through. Okay, so we're going to move on to round seven. It is another picture round. Okay. It's name the road sign round. So I get that some of you may have not driven in a while with the situation that we're in. But you should still know all your road signs. All your road signs. So, you need to name the road sign. So, your first road sign is this. What does it mean according to the highway code? What does that road sign mean according to the highway code? Now, we've got people questioning Phil's score there. What are you laughing at? I see it every day. Like looks like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so what does this road sign mean? So that is your first one. Here is your second road sign. What does this road sign mean? <laughs> Justin, who calls a snail Gary? <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants does. <laughs> so this is your second road sign. You should all know what these are mean. <laughs> your third road sign, and you need to be quite exact with this one to get the point. So what does this sign mean? According to the highway code. I'm expecting five out of fives for this. Otherwise, none of you should be allowed on the road. Here is your fourth sign. What does this fourth sign mean? <laughs> I've just seen Carol's face <laughs> reaction to that. <laughs> so that is your fourth road sign. What does that sign mean? And it is according to the highway code, so that's where the answers have come from for this one. And here is your fifth and final road sign. What does this sign mean?
So there are your five road signs all along the top there. I'm expecting five out of fives. Come on, people. Oh, Phil, 39 out of 45. His maths game is weak. Can't add up. 39 out of 45. I think it's one of the top contenders here. Give you a little more time for this. <laughs> Just him, we will lose all our licenses. Yes, you will. Especially if you don't get this last one right. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you one more minute. Okay, so we'll move on to the answers for this round. So, the first one, whatever could that mean? The correct answer is no stopping. Yeah, you got it right. So the first sign is no stopping. Your second sign, the man in the triangle, means zebra crossing. So your second answer is zebra crossing. What did you put? Caution, pedestrian. <laughs> Your third sign is mini roundabout. You do need the mini because it is for a mini roundabout. So for the point, you need mini. Your fourth sign, the man in a red circle. <laughs> means no pedestrians. Oh. So the circle means no, so no pedestrians. I put beware of men. And he put beware of men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And your final one, you should have all got this one right because I will not want to be on the roads with you if you got this wrong. It means no overtaking. No overtaking. What did you put, Andy? No oh, he did get it right. He got it right. I'll feel safe in the car with him still. So no overtaking is your last one. So that round was out of five. How well did you guys do? <laughs> what did you get, Andy? Two. Andy got two. <laughs> Maybe I won't get in a car with him again. I got four out of five. Four. I've got fours coming through. More fours, well done. Four from Linda, three from Jack. Well done, Nikki. Got five out of five. Got more fours, fours coming through. Four out of five. Well done, Donna, four. Jules, four. Jenny, four. Now we're getting five out of fives. Well done. As it should be. Kim, you got five out of five. Well done. Well done, Kim. Four for Jay, two for Ruth. That's why we never get in a car with you, Ruth. Five for Mark, three for Dina. Three for Curries, three for Melanie. Five for Navita. Well done. Five for David Carey. Well done, Gemma. Five out of five. Devinda two. Well, you did better than a lot of people, Jane, with three out of five. Okay, so we're now moving on to our final round. And the final round is a wipeout round. So the rules for the wipeout round is there's going to be ten questions. For every correct answer you put, 
you score one point. If you get a question wrong, you wipe out for the entire round, so you score zero for the round. If you're unsure of an answer, just leave the answer blank, okay? If you get all 10 correct, though, you score a bonus of five points. So the round is actually out of 15. So the rules again are, for every correct answer you put, you get one point. However, if you get an answer incorrect, you score zero for the entire round. So you wipe out for the round. If you are unsure, leave the answer blank and it won't count. But if you get 10 out of 10, you score a bonus of five points, giving you a total of 15 for this round. Okay? So your first question is, question one on the wipeout round. In the traditional UK version of Monopoly, which of the foreign properties costs more money to purchase? Is it Piccadilly or is it Leicester Square? So in the traditional UK version of Monopoly, which of the following properties costs more money to purchase? Is it Piccadilly or is it Leicester Square? Now remember, it is a wipeout round, so if you don't know the answer, leave it blank. If you get it wrong, you'll score zero for the entire round, even if you get all the others correct. So which costs more on a UK version of Monopoly, Piccadilly or Leicester Square? That was your first question. Question number two. The ohm is the SI derived unit of electrical watt. So the ohm is the SI derived unit of electrical watt. What's an ohm? Oh. Electrical. Oh, what's electrical? I always thought it was something. Some electrical measurement. <laughs> Question number three. How many stripes are there on the flag of the United States of America? How many stripes are there on the flag of the United States of America? That was question number three. Remember, wipeout rules are in effect. Question number four, which is longer, one mile or one nautical mile? Which is longer, one mile or one nautical mile? Remember, wipeout rules are in effect. That is question number four, which is longer, one mile or one nautical mile? Question number five. In the 1964 film Mary Poppins, how much does a bag of crumbs cost to feed the birds? So in the 1964 film Mary Poppins, how much does a bag of crumbs cost to feed the birds? You know that one? Question number six. What name is given to the basic unit in computing that can have only one of two values, most commonly represented as either zero or one? 
So what name is given to the basic unit in computing that can have only one of two values most commonly represented as either 0 or 1? Remember, wipeout rules are in effect. If you get it wrong, you lose all your points for this round. If you get it right, you score bonus or all 10 right, you score 5 bonus points. Question number seven. If you suffered from ombrophobia, what would you have a fear of? That's ombrophobia. Is it A, rain, B, breaking a bone, or C, wearing sportswear? So if you suffered from ombrophobia, would you have? what would you have a fear of? Is it A, rain, B, breaking a bone, or C, wearing sportswear? Yes, Liz. Wipeout rules are in effect. <laughs> Unfortunately, true. There's no questions on ponies in this quiz. I don't think. No. Sorry about that. Maybe next time. No. True with you. <laughs> Andy was disappointed as well. Question number 8 of 10, often referred to as fool's gold, the mineral pyrite is made from sulphur and which metal? So often referred to as fool's gold, the mineral pyrite is made from sulphur and which metal? Looks like Dad's struggling with this one. Yeah. Question nine. What is the capital city of Canada? What is the capital city of Canada? And your final question of this round and of tonight's quiz is, which was founded first? Is it A, YouTube, B, Twitter, or C, Facebook? So which was founded first? Is it A, YouTube, B, Twitter, or C, Facebook? So you're looking at which of these was founded first. And we'll have a quick flick through the questions one last time in case you missed any. The first one was, in the traditional UK version of Monopoly, which of the following properties costs more money to purchase? Piccadilly or Leicester Square? Second one was, the ohm is the SI-derived unit of electrical what? Question three was, how many stripes are there on the flag of the United States of America? Question four is, which is longer, one mile 
or one nautical mile. Question five. In the 1964 film Mary Poppins, how much does a bag of crumbs cost to feed the birds? Question six. What name is given to the basic unit in computing that can have only one of two values, most commonly represented as either zero or one? Question seven, if you suffer from ombrophobia, what would you have a fear of? Is it A, rain, B, breaking a bone, or C, wearing sportswear? Question eight, often referred to as fool's gold, the mineral pyrite is made from sulfur and which metal? Question nine, what is the capital city of Canada? And the last question was, which was founded first? Is it A, YouTube, B, Twitter, or C, Facebook? Remember, if you're unsure, leave it blank, because if you get it wrong, you will wipe out on that round. Okay, so time for the answers. So remember, if you get it correct, you score one point. Get it wrong, if you put an answer, you wipe out for the whole round. If you left it blank, it's fine, you can move on. So the first question was, what costs more, Piccadilly or Leicester Square? Correct answer is Piccadilly. Piccadilly costs 280, Leicester Square costs 260 pounds. Second question, the ohm is the unit of electrical resistance. Ohm is the unit of electrical resistance. Question three, the number of stripes on the flag of the USA. There is 13 stripes. There's seven red and six white. They all represent the former 13 colonies. Question four, which is longer, one mile or one nautical mile? Correct answer is a nautical mile. So a nautical mile is approximately 1.852 kilometers. One mile is 1.6 kilometers approximately. Question five, in the 1964 film Mary Poppins, how much does it cost to buy a bag of crumbs for the birds? Feed the birds, tuppence a bag. If you put two pence, you can have the point two. The correct answer is tuppence. Question six, the basic unit in computing. It is called a bit. It's a bit is the lowest form of data in a computer. Question seven, if you suffered from ombrophobia, you would have a fear of rain. You'd have a fear of rain. Question eight. Fool's gold is made from sulfur and which metal? It is iron, commonly called iron pyrite. Question nine. The capital city of Canada is Ottawa. And the last question, which was founded first? Is it YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook? Correct answer is Facebook. Facebook was founded in February 2004. YouTube founded in February 2005. And Twitter was founded in March of the following year. So remember, if you got a question wrong, you score zero because you completely wipe out. Okay? But if you got all 10 correct, you score bonus five points. And you can score 15. And just let you add up your score. So what did you get out of 15 on that? I've just had Tracy message me saying, please sing that again. What the feed the birds. Feed the birds, tuppence a bag. 
So the whole quiz is out of 65. So what did you say? We're getting zero. So a lot of people seem to have wiped out on that. Nikki scored three. Alfie scored 15 out of 15. Wipe out for Team Tenant. Trudy wiped out as well. Charlene wiped out. Jane wiped out. Kim, nine. Which one did you not get right, Kim? Gemma wiped out. Oh, Henry's team wiped out. So what was your total scores out of 65? So we've got 35 and a half out of... It's out of 65, Dad. <laughs> got 35 and a half out for Dad. 37 for Mark. Uh, 45 and a half for Sarah. Well done, Sarah. 38 and a half for Nikki. 26 for Emily. 37 for Henry. 32. 66, Liz. 66. <laughs> 30 and a half for, six, for Trudy. What, what we got there? 31 and a half for Karen. 33 and a half for Jack's team. Phil has got 53 out of 65. I'm not seeing anything higher than that. So has anyone actually legitimately beat that? 53 out of 65. Well done, Tracy. 45 out of 65. 32 and a half for David Carey. 22 for Team Gemma. 26 for Rudy. 39 for Zoe and Matt. Well done. 25 and a half for Jane. Well done, Donna. 42. 22 for Davinda. 23 for Jamie. Oh, because her, him and Laura missed out because they were in the hot tub. <clears throat> I've got a cheers for the quiz and highlighting my dimness. <laughs> Lorraine, 26 out of 65. Anyone else there? Tracy got 28. Well done, Tracy. I got 21. And he got 21. Mm. Alfie apparently got 63 out of 65. 63 out of 65? My old school teacher got 41. <laughs> well done, Mrs. McAnally. Where do the halves get calculated? Um... I can't remember where we had a half. Was it Star Wars? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Andy's dad got 26 out of 65. Okay, so if Alfie's is correct, which I don't know whether that is or not, I don't know, is 63 out of 65. And we've also got Big Phil, who scored 53 out of 65. Ursula got a massive 17. Well done. Oh, I missed your little gay face too, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you all enjoyed that, would you like a quiz the same time next week? If so, leave comments, etc. in places, because I can host another one if need be. So a big thank you then to all of you who tuned in to YouTube. We've got you guys on Facebook as well. And all the people here on Zoom. It was nice to see a few people and react to uh, their reactions as well. Oh, no worries. No worries. Saying thank you. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll do a quiz same time next week then. I'll set up the, the Facebook page. And uh, we'll be back here next time. So until next week, I shall see you all then. Bye.